I'm glad that you were with me uh, today for worship at Leesburg Presbyterian Church. First, I want to thank Gas Frank Gasparini, who is today's liturgist, also Heidi Renner, who is our videographer, and Eric and Alana Nans, who are providing today's worship service, all the way from Fort Myer, Florida. One of the great gifts of these online worship experiences is that we can have Eric once again uh, as our music leader for worship. It's such a treat to have him. And while I'm giving thanks, I want to thank you members and friends of Leesburg Presbyterian uh, Church for your continued generous giving to the ministry of this church here at Leesburg Presbyterian. We're so grateful that even though we're not able to pass the plate and be together in worship, you are continuing to give, so thank you. Our Stay Connected small groups are going to begin meeting this week, and these are really drop-in experiences we know, even uh, though you can't necessarily make all four weeks, you can come and go. We're not expecting more than 10 people to meet in each group. And Tuesday morning, Karen Hickman is leading a group at 10 o'clock a.m. Frank and Vicki Gasparini are leading a Wednesday evening group at 6 o'clock p.m. And then Carson Rich, our Director of Youth Ministry, is working on getting a group of parents of youth together to form a small group, a Stay Connected group. And the time for this group is yet to be determined, but we'll let you know when we know. So let us now gather in on this Trinity Sunday. It's the Sunday after Pentecost where the church celebrates the gift of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Creator, God the Son, the Redeemer, and God the Holy Spirit, the Sustainer. And this service today, we are really focusing on the gift of God as the Holy Spirit. So let us begin our worship, remembering that as breath is to our bodies, so worship is to the body of Christ wherever you are. Greetings, I'm Frank Gasparini. I'm privileged to be a member and an elder of this church, and we look forward to the day when we can greet you all here in person. For now, please join me in the call to worship. We rise this day in the power of the Holy Spirit. We lift our hands, our hearts, our songs to praise you, O God. Whether the day is bright or gloomy, you are our light. Receive our morning worship, holy triune God. Amen.
Please join me in the prayer to conf of confession. Loving and almighty God, listen to our silent confession. Hear us as each of us remembers and repents of those times when we have not acted justly with those known to us and those unknown to us. Hear us as each of us remembers and repents of the ways we have not loved kindness, but instead cherished meanness and getting even and shown ill will toward others. Hear us, O God, as each of us remembers and repents of our failure to walk humbly with, because we are so deeply inclined towards pride in our own goodness and wisdom. Amen. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let us then take heart in these words from scripture. As God's own people, be merciful in action. Be kindly in heart and humble in mind. Be always ready to forgive. As freely as God has forgiven you and above everything else, be loving and never forget to be thankful for what Christ has done for us. Amen. Today in worship, we have a children's message, but it's really a message for everyone. Uh, on Pentecost Sunday, last Sunday, our children were given Pentecost bags from the CE committee filled with everything you would need to have for a birthday party. 
and Meredith Hickman put photos together of these parties, Pentecost parties, into a, a wonderful collage that you will now see. Jesus loves you, this I know, for the Bible tells us so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves you, yes, Jesus loves you. loves you for the Bible tells us so yes Jesus loves you for the Bible tells us so and don't ever forget it Amelia There is a new hymn in our hymn book that I don't think we've sung at Leesburg Presbyterian. And Eric is going to play and Alana as well on the piano and sing this beautiful song. The music was written first by a Christian in Singapore and then he sent it to a friend in New Zealand who put words to this song about the Holy Spirit. So be sure and listen to the beautiful lyrics as we prepare uh, to hear scripture this morning. As the wind song through the trees, as the stirring of the breeze, so it is with the Spirit of God. As the heart made strangely warm, as the voice within the storm, so it is with the Spirit of God, never seen, never known, where this wind has blown, bringing light, bringing power to the world, as the dancing tongues of fire, as the soul's most deep desire, so it is with the Spirit of God. Making worlds that are new, making 
The scripture lesson this morning is from Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, beginning with verse 22. As I read, let us listen for God's word. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, or envying one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O loving God, weigh the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Breathe. Ever since the world saw the video and heard George Floyd's desperate words, I can't breathe, I have found myself holding my breath for what will come next in the unfolding drama of this profound American trauma made manifest in George Floyd's death but not exclusive to it. Holding my breath, will anyone get hurt or killed at this protest in this city or in that city? Still holding my breath, will there be looting again when darkness sets in? Will it stop? When? holding my breath. Today, what words will, will be spoken by our political leaders? Will they be words to soothe or words to inflame? How will law enforcement walk the fine line of keeping the peace while respecting the right to protest? Holding my breath. Will discouragement and rage overcome hope and determination among those so weary and leery of a system of justice that promises so much more than it has delivered to so many for hundreds of years in our national history? Ever since we heard those words, I can't breathe. We've been reading of mothers and fathers who speak of holding their breath when their black sons and daughters are out in the world. Running an errand, hanging with friends, coming home late from work, jogging in a neighborhood, holding their breath worrying if their child will be mistaken as a good-for-nothing so-and-so. Worrying if they will act the right way when pulled over for a traffic violation. Holding their breath anxious if their children will be in the wrong place even at the right time or at the right place at the right time, but with the wrong police officer. Breathe. Since mid-March, we have learned that the most dangerous thing about the COVID-19 virus is how it impedes one's ability to breathe. I remember clearly the impact a long newspaper article had on my family detailing what happens when a patient 
is put on a respirator who has the virus. A nurse was quoted as saying that it is like trying to breathe into a rock. Breathe. Nothing is better than the ability to breathe freely and deeply, filling our lungs, oxygenating our entire bodies. And conversely, nothing is more dire and desperate than those moments of gasping for breath. It's ironic, isn't it, that breath is the same metaphor that aptly fits the two crises that we are dealing with right now. The epidemic of the coronavirus and the epidemic virus of, there's no other way to say it, of racism. A virus that can masquerade itself and go undetected until it erupts with the full force of someone's knee crushing the breath of a man lying helpless on the ground. And oddly enough, breath is the metaphor for this season in the church. This Pentecost season, when the followers of Jesus received the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ruach, the Holy Pneuma. Ruach in Hebrew and Pneuma in Greek, the same word can have three interchangeable meanings. Spirit, breath, wind. And these words, breath, spirit, wind, they are the connector in the biblical story of God and God's people. The spirit throughout scripture is the ever present force and power of God at work in this story. At the very beginning of creation, when the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, there was ruach, wind, spirit, breath. And while this ruach was hovering over and sweeping over the face of the water, God said, let there be light. And then in chapter 2 of the Genesis creation story, or the, the second story, these words, then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a human being. What makes a creature of the earth a human being is the ruach of God, the breath, the spirit of the holy. And still later, we hear God speak to his prophet Ezekiel to pronounce these words to uh, God's people who are living in the despair and the hopelessness of being in exile. Prophesy to these bones. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath, ruach, to enter you and you shall live. O oh, my people, I will put forth my spirit, my ruach, my breath within you, and you shall live. And Jesus, when he began his ministry, he spoke words from Isaiah, saying, The spirit, the ruach of the Lord is upon me, because he's anointed me to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to let the oppressed go free. And at the end of Jesus' life on the cross, John writes, then he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit, his pneuma, his breath. And after his death and resurrection, Jesus, the risen Lord, according to John, greets his disciples 
and breathes in the same spirit, Ruach, Numa, and to the disciples. The same spirit that God breathed into creation. And then, last week's story of Pentecost. Suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues of fire rested upon them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, the holy breath of God. From the very beginning with God, to have breath, is to have the aliveness of God within us. It is something so sacred, so fundamental, that not only is it necessary to have life, literally, this breath of God, but to have life spiritually and morally as well. The breath of God, the wind of God, the Spirit of God is not just a natural force, it's a moral force. Filling the prophets, resting upon Jesus, empowering him to do God's ordained ministry. And this inspired, inspirited power of Jesus rests upon us now, the followers of Jesus. This Pentecost spirit is a holy wind sweeping us up into the mighty, unfinished work of the sun. And it needs to be noted that Ruach, Numa, the spirit, is just not always predictable or controllable. It can be a calm and gentle wind one moment and a strong and chaotic wind the next moment. But all the while working at God's recreation of the world into God's beloved community. The breath, the wind, the spirit of God goes where it will, moving out in the world within and among people, disturbing at times the status quo while also kept calming troubled hearts. Just yesterday, I read of a spirit-filled moment in a Washington Post article about a man and his neighborhood in Nashville, Tennessee, and maybe you have read it as well. Sean Dromgoul is a 29-year-old black man who's lived in the same Nashville neighborhood his entire life. But over the years, he's felt more and more like an outsider as it's become more gentrified and he is now a minority member of the neighborhood called 20 South. Those feelings of being an outsider grew in recent weeks, he said, when he heard about Ahmed Armory a black man who was out jogging in a Georgia neighborhood when he was shot to death. And then when he heard of George Floyd's death up in Minneapolis. He said, what happened to these men could easily happen to me. I became scared to walk past my porch. And it didn't help when he read postings on the app that connects neighbors next door when he read apps warning residents to look out for suspicious black men in their neighborhood. Trapped inside by fear, Sean took to Facebook and the neighborhood app and he posted these words. Yesterday I wanted to walk around my neighborhood but the fear of not returning home to my family alive kept me on my front porch. Unexpectedly, responses from his community started pouring in and neighbors and people whom uh, Dromgul didn't know asked if they could join him on a walk. 
He said, neighbor after neighbor started reaching out and telling me they wanted to walk with me. So he posted that he would be going for a walk at 6 p.m. and anyone was welcome to join him. At 6, he tied his shoes, stepped off the front porch, and walked to the meeting spot in a nearby parking lot. And there he found 75 people waiting for him. Sean can walk outside now and breathe in deeply and freely of the beautiful night air in Nashville. A new wind, a new ruach, is blowing in his neighborhood, a wind that he hopes will sweep up other neighborhoods like his into this spirit of goodwill and kindness and support. We need these stories right now, don't we? But more than this, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach of God, wants to sweep us up into the great story of God so perfectly and completely told in the life and ministry and death and resurrection of Jesus. And this inspired, inspirited story is always about the poor receiving good news, the captive and the oppressed finding release and freedom, and the blind becoming empowered to see what they had not been able to see before. Don't you feel this Holy Spirit working out here in the world? The Holy Spirit, it's working on us. All honor and glory be given. To God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit, be working on us. Breathe gratitude into all those gathered for this experience of worship. Gratitude for the day, for family, for friendship, for food, for health, and for health care. Be working on us, Holy Spirit, to ever be grateful for the freedoms given to us, the freedoms of expression and information, the freedom to exercise our religious beliefs, the freedom to love who we will love and with, and with whom to live in the covenantal bonds. 
Holy Spirit, be working on us, your church. Breathe new life in us as we try during this time of disease and social unrest to be a vibrant and bold body of Christ, even as we gather online and not face to face. Holy Spirit, unify us in our separateness. Summon us to learn and to serve and to worship, even as we may grow weary of this new reality of church so different than we have known and loved it before. Holy Spirit, be working on us in your individual and in our individual lives. Breathe encouragement into those discouraged. Breathe forgiveness into those caught up with self-loathing or strangled by long-held resentments. Breathe healing and comfort to those who are sick, to those who care for the sick, and those who grieve. Especially this morning, O oh Lord, we pray your peace, your strength, your comfort upon Pastor Michelle Thomas, a leader in our community who is experiencing the tragic loss of her 16-year-old son. Breathe energy, O oh God, into those who are weary and heavy laden. And yes, Holy Spirit, be working on our national community. Let the righteous wind of your Holy Spirit blow through communities all over our nation, sweeping us up into your vision of becoming a unified people dedicated to equal justice and betterment of every single citizen living in this land of unequaled promise and freedom. Yes, Holy Spirit, be working on us. Beloved, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Be ready to help the suffering, to strengthen the faint-hearted, to support the weak. Honor all people and rejoice that the Holy Spirit is alive and strong out in the world, working out God's holy purposes. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of God's Holy Spirit be with you and those who you love now and always. Amen. May the grace of Christ and the love of God be with you, be with you till we meet again. May the fellowship of the Holy One be with you, be with you. Till we meet again, be with you, be with you, till we meet.